Okay, let's start. So please tell us which country you're from. Hi, my name is Mispa. I am from England. And how long have you been working in Korea? I've been working here for four years now. My name is Jeffrey and I am from Toronto, Canada. I've actually been in Korea now over 16 years. I'm from Indonesia. I've been living in Korea for around 10 years and I've been working in Korea for around five years. I'm from Portugal. I'd say around like almost two years now, coming on two years. I'm from America. I've been working in Korea five years now. I'm from Italy. Uh, what's your current job in Korea? I'm a marketing manager in a trading company. As a foreigner here, you need a visa sponsorship to work here. So you have to have a minimum wage to work in a foreign, like in a Korean company that allows you to sponsor you a visa. So now I'm earning basically the minimum that I have to get for like, yeah, to work here. So I run uh, an English computer business that uh, caters to the English speaking community in Korea. And how much do you currently make? So after many years of hard work, I right now I would say every month I make at least 10 million won a month. My current job is in entertainment. So I'm an actress, model, content creator, but I was a teacher actually for three and a half years. So this is my new six month experience with the entertainment world. Yeah. And because I'm in entertainment, it just varies month to month. So it's not kind of consistent. Um, so it's not a lot. It could be from like 200,000 a month to a million one a month, something like that. So a lot less than I was making when I was teaching. Yeah. Uh, I'm an editor in Korea. Editor as in as in like uh, an English copywriter per month, it breaks down after taxes to um, about 3.3, 3.5 million a month. I'm a U.S. attorney working in Korea. But each month I make around 600 mm -hmm. So that's, what's that, 6 million a month, 6 million a month, yep. I'm currently working as an export consultant in a marketing research and export consulting company. I wouldn't be able to specify like exactly the amount, but it's on the range around 40 million to 45 million per year. Currently, I work as a freelance entertainer and actor. During like the busy periods, I can make over 5 million won, but during the slow periods, I, I barely have any work. I'm a commercial model and I'm preparing to launch my own fashion brand, so I'm working on both of them at the moment. Personally, I would say like at least 1,500 to 2,000 during March and uh, autumn season. In winter, 500, you're lucky, yeah. That's in US dollars? That's in US dollars, yeah. And do you think uh, you would earn more or perhaps less in the same with the same job in your home country? I think it's somewhat going to be similar or maybe lesser because you know India's cost of living is much cheaper compared to that of Korea so I think like making lesser amount in India and living there and making more amount in living in Korea I think it's the same thing. As an English teacher. How much do you currently make per month? Right now, the contract that I signed is for 2.8. Do you think you would earn more or less for the same position for the current job you have in the United States? As an English teacher in the U.S., oh, I'm definitely learning, earning more here. I don't have the qualifications to be a teacher in the U.S. If I have to be honest, I really would earn less in Italy because like now the situation in Italy, like job wise is not the best. So it's similar to Korea, you know, everyone is struggling to find a job here. But yeah, wages are way lower than Korea, I think, in Italy. I would definitely be earning at least twice what I make in Korea. The main reason is because the cost of living is so much higher in the States. So just to be able to keep up with the cost of living, you would have to make at least double. But actually here, the salary is very comparable to the cost of living. So I don't think it's really that big of a, of a deal. I'm able to have a really good life on that kind of salary. In Canada, I would probably earn more. In Canada and the United States, uh, the, there's what it's called the Actors Union, so it's like for the best interest, um, there's more visibility about the payment that happens in this field. Well, in Korea, 
Uh, there's no real contracts. There's no unions that really protect their in, insure income. So they, what happens? It's more like word of mouth and people, middlemen, taking some of the money from the talent. So do you feel like your current salary is enough for you to cover all your living expenses? Um, to be honest, even though the salary in Korea is pretty much higher than my home country, but of course the living expenses in Korea is also high. So I can say it can cover, but um, I cannot say that it's really enough. I mean, it depends of course on your lifestyle and everything. Yeah. Uh, no, no, <laughs> uh, no uh, it, it's definitely not. Um, but on the on the other hand, I am I am working freelance, so I do have the freedom to you know try to create new job opportunities for myself, and that you have to juggle that. You either have the freedom or you have the security. Like I'm 30 years old, and <laughs> and I remember like thinking, oh man, when I'm 30, I'll have my life together. That's not not true, right? And it's just. And I know that if I need to, even though like my parents are not rich in any way, shape or form, and I have siblings too, and of course I could always ask them for help, but it's, I mean, it was my decision to live abroad. Like I chose to be here to be, you know, out in the wild. So I also want to fend for myself, you know. Basically the harder I work, the more money I make, but I would say my living, my I would say yes, it's very comfortable. <laughs> Do you ever struggle financially? If not now, in the past, have you struggled financially and why? Yes, so when I first came to Korea, I was actually an international student. And as a student, I didn't have a job, so it was really hard to actually just live. And long story, uh, I got married when I was 20. And I had, I, and I became a father at 21. And as a student, um, and as a student, being a father was actually really tough. And that's actually what motivated me to start this business. You know, I wouldn't say I struggle financially. In fact, I would say I'm pretty comfortable. But I will say, you know, even though I am on the higher end of the spectrum, in terms of real estate and finding a place to live, that's still pretty difficult for me. I think that's, you know, a little difficult still. I'm still by no means, you know, ready to buy an apartment in Gangnam, you know? So for me, even though I am a lawyer, it's still very hard for me to find a place to live that would be super competitive. So, I mean, for me, if that's difficult for me, you know, being someone who went to law school and studied a bit more than your regular person, well, how much more difficult is it going to be for somebody who, let's say, didn't go to university or just went to university? So I think when you keep cost of living in account and especially real estate, Korea is still pretty difficult to live in that situation. <laughs> it's been a struggle bus, to be honest, but I had like loads of savings from my teaching. So anytime I do get a job, like I will grab the opportunity to work anything in the entertainment business just because I want to get as much experience as I want. Korea is not a cheap country. So just putting that out there, a lot of people think, okay, if you move to Asia, it's going to be so cheap. Which aspects make it really expensive? Um, rent is ridiculous. Housing in Korea is scary because if you're putting like, for example, a deposit down, the deposit is 5,000. The best way to describe it is if I'm using British pounds is like 5,000 pounds, 10,000 pounds just for an apartment. Whereas in England, that would be an that would be a house deposit. Fruit and vegetables, groceries. Oh my God. Like coming from Italy, like, yeah, like you can find a, like a lot of fruit and vegetables in supermarket, like very cheap, <laughs> but here last, like two days ago, I went to the supermarket and everyone was so expensive. I couldn't buy nothing like fruit and vegetables were too expensive. And there's not even a, like, a, it's very limited choice. Like, I, yeah, I was, oh, I really wanted some fruit. I was craving some fruit and vegetables because we eat a lot in Italy. Like anything that's just like, what an Asian would think as exotic, like, uh, hot dogs, like uh, right now, uh, the, like a famous trend for food restaurants is putting hot dogs, and they're about like 9,000 won for just basic sausages on a bun. And back home, that's they're everywhere you could find. I don't know, I don't really feel like so it's all that expensive with the exception of the housing costs. Yeah, I mean, I know that ho housing prices are like outrageous here in the city. 
But other than that, I don't really feel like anything else is really all that expensive. Comparatively, like cost of food is way cheaper here than it is in the States. Transportation is way cheaper here than it is in the States. Like the daily life necessity things, I do find to be less expensive overall than the States. So eating out is definitely way cheaper. Um, Especially when it comes to tips, you know, that's not a part of, tipping culture doesn't exist in restaurants here, so you don't have to worry about that. But when I go grocery shopping, it really depends on where you shop. I try, if I'm getting fresh produce, I try to go to the markets as much as possible because I know that I can afford those fruits and vegetables. But if you go to somewhere like Shinsege, a, a bunch of grapes is going to be 30,000 won, and that's just... I mean, treat yourself if you want to, but that's not what I would choose to spend 30,000 won on. Yeah. And how much do you think you need to earn to live worry-free then? Um, if it's worry-free, maybe based on Korean GNI, um, like maybe two times from my salary right now, maybe around, um, let's say, eight million, seven to eight million per month, it would be much more like comfortable. Three million a month is uh, pretty average for a foreigner uh, here, but uh, any more you could you take the ta you could also like take taxis and, and whatnot. So you could survive around like around three million, but to be comfortable and do all the stuff, I think uh, north of three million would be more suitable. Mm -hmm. Maybe so I could just you know go out, just eat, and save up a bit for traveling. That's where I like to spend my money traveling. I don't really buy clothes, like, these are all my grandmas, but my point is, uh, if I could, let's like, say, say 2,000, like 2,000 US dollars, that, that would make me, that would, that would be plenty. That would be enough for rent, gas, gas during winter, it goes like, yeah. Great, and do you think it's possible to earn this much as a foreigner in Korea? Oh, I'm sure it is. I know people who work in the same industry that I do, who've been doing it for longer, better for sure, uh, who make that and more. If you want to be able to plan for the future and you know, save for retirement, save for your financial goals and travel and do things that you enjoy, I would say definitely between three and four million is more comfortable. And do you think it's possible to really earn the salary as a foreigner in Korea, how easy it is? Um, I would say that it is not impossible, but it's not easy either because a lot of the jobs that are available to foreign residents within Korea and just jobs in general, to be honest, don't pay that kind of salary. I think especially if you're on a work visa in Korea, you are really at the mercy of your employer. And unfortunately, sometimes employers know that. And for you to keep a job, it means that they have to, you know, you're at their mercy. There are instances in which the leaders of, of companies will take advantage of this and will say like, oh, we're gonna give you a raise. You know, you go to your boss, you say, I really need more money. And they'll say, okay, yeah, next year. <laughs> or they'll just keep you on this string. And um, yeah, so that's unfortunate. I have heard of that happening quite a few times and it's happened to me as well, so <laughs> that's sad. What professions do you think offer some of the highest um, salaries for foreigners working here? I would say, so uh, there's a lot of foreigners working in the IT sector and from what I've been hearing about how much they make, it's, it's, it's good money. I think a uh, university teacher offers a good salary and a good, good life work balance, let's say, because you work like for a semester in a university. Of course, it's very intense. Some of the foreigners that I've met that have actually been able to make a large income, they've they've diversified. So like they've been vet, so they've had they have their fingers in a bunch of different projects. Have you heard of some of the lowest paying jobs as a foreigner in Korea? Um, yes. So um, in acting, many of my friends like are Russian or like or like or from Ukraine or uh, Belarus. Um, they came here and they were actually working in factories. Uh, so and they were just they didn't have any. They just needed a place to go and they needed money during the pandemic. So they were paid very poorly. Um, 
I mean, everyone's probably seen the movie Squid Games, right? So, you know, like, the situation of Ali from Squid Games, you know, like, a foreigner just working in a factory, not able to speak the native language, and often uh, taken advantage of. I would say modeling, for sure. I think entertainment, for sure. I know, like, some people who make, like, less than 100000 a month, and we're... But one thing about that is, like, I think Korea has a very how do I say, like good community within foreigners. So we always like trying to help out each other. So yeah, sometimes they make less than a hundred K a month. So I would say entertainment. Uh, how important is it to speak Korean if you want to work here? Um, I wouldn't say it's very important, but it's very comfortable. Like if you speak Korean, you can definitely get more jobs. You can definitely talk to more people, get into networking. So I wouldn't say it's like a hundred percent required, although I do like encourage people to learn it because you're coming, you know, to their country. So if you speak Korean, it's much, much, much easier. But if you don't speak Korean, you're still going to survive. I can say it's highly important to speak Korean. For example, in my position as a um, expert consultant, I do have to attend so many meetings with overseas buyers in which I have to be a middleman who try to interpret and translate between the Korean to other languages, English or my native Indonesian. So being able to speak in Korean is very, very important. Have you been previously promoted before? Were you always successful with the salary raise? Um, Yes, in my current company, because I've been working for almost five years with my experience, then I was um, promoted, like last year, I was promoted to the senior manager, uh, the junior manager. I am not the senior manager yet, still the junior. And do you feel like there is some kind of glass ceiling? Uh, yes, I can say yes. Uh -huh. As I mentioned that because sometimes um, when you are in Korean company and you are a foreigner and you are a minority, right? They will see you as not that capable, even though you are, you're probably very capable, but of course, like you don't know some cultures, some underlying cultures that, you, that the Koreans might understand. So yes, of course, there's some glass ceiling. You always will be viewed as a foreigner here. You can speak perfectly Korean. You can uh, live basically as a Korean. You can get married with a Korean, but you will always be seen as a foreigner here. In some companies, yeah, in some working environments, I think you struggle to get a like a promotion because you just get set in that role as you are perceived from the society, you you are the foreigner, so you have that role. Uh, but I think it depends on the situation, of course, it's just generally speaking, yeah. I would say glass ceiling, for sure. I have seen the Korean, my Korean co-workers get promoted way faster. I think that, again, with our cultural constructs, for mostly Western-minded people, we expect raises based on merit, whereas maybe in a Korean cultural construct, it's more hours put in and effort. For instance, when our promotion cycle comes around, we would measure success by, this is what I've done that was good. Where maybe a Korean employee might measure it by, here's how many hours I spent and this is what I gave to the company. So it's just different metrics. And I'm just 100% honest. <laughs> Working overtime, I, I really value work-life balance. So for me, I'm just not willing to work 10, 12 hours a day for a promotion that I may that may or may not make my life easier. You know, a lot of the times when you get promoted, it it you have to work even more. So that's just not something that I was ever really concerned about. <laughs> Some of our viewers might be interested in moving to Korea and working themselves. Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you can tell them before they decide to come here? Uh, so first, I would just say, uh, don't move to the Korea just for the sake of moving to Korea. You, think about, you also have to think about what your career plans are and see if job opportunities in Korea will actually help further your career plans. If you're planning to work here, I suggest you to study here in university and get a Korean degree. It, it, it was the 
best decision I ever made. Like as soon as I saw I had a Korean degree in my resume, they said, "Oh, you studied here in Korea. You have a Korean degree. You must be like very like uh, so, let's say yeah, you're able to speak Korean. You're uh, able to understand like you know Korean society and and also like visa wise they." tend to sponsor you a visa also in the immigration office if you have the degree certificate, yeah. Come here with savings, for sure. Don't come here thinking like in three months you're gonna get your life together, it's not gonna happen. You have to come here with savings and I would encourage like you earn at least a bit of Korean, like at least like general conversation Korean before coming here. And also, I know that Korea has a lot of new visas for foreigners these days. So I would encourage like you come here for like a more short term visa, like maybe work experience visa. You experience the country and then switch for something long term. The most important thing is to manage your expectations and to really get uncomfortable with the idea that it might not be exactly what you had expected. So being able to just write out, like I, I always love to write out my expectations and be like, okay, here's what I expect a daily, my daily life to look like. And then just read it back and think, is that kind of rose colored glasses, you know? Like, is that realistic? Um, and then just realizing that, you know, there's a lot of media that shows us a very bright and shiny side of every country in the world. And that's not usually the experience when you're living here. So yeah, just to be really real about those expectations and what you want to gain out of the experience. And if you go in with a mindset of, this is an opportunity that not everyone gets and I get to grow and learn, then that is golden. That's it for today. Thank, Thank you so much for the interview. I appreciate it.